Hello everyone, it's Birdie here, the Recycled Hippie Chick. Oh, you stay over there. How are you doing today? I came out to do a video and I wanted to do a Pinterest play, but I have three journals that I've made that I wanted to kind of show you first. So I thought, well, I'll do a flip through Friday and then I'll do a Pinterest play. So I don't think I should add them both together. They'll be too long. So, these two journals that I just made uh, last week are from a file folder. Uh, inspiration from, but all of these are inspiration from Lynn at A Bit of Birdsong. She does all kinds of different journals. And I tend to just do, you know, cereal box and that's it. So... I have been trying to step out of my comfort zone and learn some different techniques. This one is file folder. It's only two signatures and I tried to put a cluster on the front. Um, I was going to sew around the cluster, but I had put my pocket on the inside first, which she says do not do. And so then I couldn't sew my cluster on because I would have sewed my my pockets shut. So I had to glue it on. So these are naked journals. One day if I ever, I'm thinking about doing a Kofi shop um, instead of Etsy and seeing how my luck is with that. I have a whole drawer full to put in there or wherever I ever decide to. Remember the clusters we did that one day together? That's what that is. This is a fish sandwich box from McDonald's that I had saved a long time ago. And I just flipped the bottom up and turned it into a pocket. This is just a little booklet with a cute little image on it. This is my um, attempt at... Um, Citrusol on National Geographic. This is a Janet Nash inspired envelope out of a magazine page. All kinds of just old papers, ruffles, uh, spray. This is Moss Cottage inspired uh, ink spraying, coffee dyeing. This is a cloth pocket, and some of these I just paper clipped in so that whoever buys these journals one day can put the pockets wherever they wish. Little book page pocket. This is one of those um, clusters that we made the other day and I just sewed down it and turned it into a pocket. This is a cluster from a long time ago. A little grocery bag lunch bag, not a grocery bag, pockets, gel plate, tea bag ruffle, oops, I'm getting out of frame here, I just used, stuck these tags in the other side of the lunch bag, and this is uh, several pages from the phone book, and I just left them open. I figured somebody could use that as a pocket if they wished. Or they could do with whatever they want. But I just liked the thickness of several pages together. Side pocket. This is actually made out of one of those record sleeves that you put your albums in. And just a little pocket of different papers that I stuck in the back pocket. So there is file folder. Another file folder that I had an old, what do you call these, quilts that my friend Tracy gave me that I sat on for years on my chair and it has just all but worn out so I decided to turn it into um, journal cover over my file folder with a cluster. Uh, Lynn does a video on these 
and um, handmade roses. So I made one of those and put on my cover. Inside pocket with tags. My painty paper. Tea bag inside of a pocket. It's hard because I've got a paper clip. Tea bag inside of a, the tea bag folder that I had collaged. Somebody can either leave that plain or they could glue it in somewhere. This was a piece of paper that I had found at a state sale clean out and it almost looks like it feels like mushroom would feel like but I'm guessing it's homemade paper of some sort but it's just really interesting almost a wood grain it honestly it looks like mushrooms vintage papers this was my gosh I'm listing so many people on here I don't know if I'll be able to remember them all to link them in the bottom but I will try this is a Kylie Koo I believe where she ironed wax somebody ironed wax on their paper that was my attempt at that maybe it was Joey Defee My attempt did not turn out as pretty as theirs, but I did like the effect, so. The other side of that, I'm going to call it mushroom paper. Pockets and tags. Every time I go to Lowe's, I grab two or three of these. <laughs> so, I have a lot of paint strips to share. This is another piece of my painty paper, and I just have a flip out. This was a seed packet that I thought was pretty, so I turned it into a pocket with a ruffle. Painty paper, you know, my background paper here. I love making pages out of that. A card. A Trader Joe's flyer. A piece of material that someone could slow stitch on. pocket that somebody could put wherever they wanted. This is just um, tissue paper scrunched up over a uh, master board with uh, ran my ink pad over the top. You know where Joey Defee was showing us how to glue different pages together to make our pages master board style. Hers turn out much Everybody's things turn out much more beautiful than mine, but I love to try them. I love to try them. And if you've never seen theirs, you'll think mine is beautiful. So it's okay. It's all wonderful. Another little cloth paper. These cloth pockets are cloth pocket. These pockets are made out of a, a little sample book of um, curtain material or fabric material or something that my friend Loretta gave me. So I make pockets out of those. And a back page. And I don't remember. I think it was Lynn again. Maybe last year or so that did these little cute little flowers that I attempted. So I make several of them at a time when I see something like that. So I have some on hand. Anyway, that's that one file folder book. My next book is also Lynn inspired, except uh, I don't know that I'll ever try this again. I had a slow stitch piece that I wanted to do something with. And she was doing a cardboard journal. And I had this thin cardboard that was a pancake box that I wanted to use because I liked the image and I wanted to see it. And I decided I was going to attempt her cardboard journal, except 
I couldn't figure out how she did the spine and she actually does her cardboard journals all one piece of cardboard and then she bends them here which I think looks better because it doesn't give such a sharp spine it's more rounded so if you decide to do a cardboard journal I think if you're going to do a wide, if you do a small spine, it wouldn't matter. But I'm doing a three inch spine. I've never done a spine this large and I wanted to attempt it. So I've been stepping outside of my box, trying new things. So if you do a large spine journal, make sure you use all one piece of cardboard if you want your edges kind of rounded. What I did was just added another piece of cardboard in the center for the spine. The whole concept of this journal was this part. This is where she takes her cloth and she actually sews her signatures right onto the cloth. And she usually does hers one at a time, but I heard her say, somebody mentioned trying two at a time. So of course I just jump right up my first time to two pages, in which is extremely hard to do. Once you get them all sewn onto your piece of material, then you glue that material on. Sometimes she will do hers, I don't think with cardboard, I think she probably uses fabric or a file folder. Sometimes she sews them right into the book, which I knew I couldn't bend this in my machine to sew them in here. So I had to sew it on separate material and glue it on. Because I know a lot of times you can see her sewing right on the outside of her book. Well, this was probably the hardest project I have ever endeavored, trying to sew these in. Trying to hold these straight, and your material straight, and the two pages together, and then when you get to the next set, there's no way you can get them level. Like, they're going to be crooked. There's just no way around it. And then get the next set in beside that one and hold it. And then when it gets heavy, for the whole thing falling off the side of your sewing machine, still trying to hold it. I did it because I'm stubborn, but I don't think I will try this again. If you like this type of journal, I suggest you just go buy one from Lynn. I, I don't know. Try it once because it, it may be your groove and you may get right through it. But I think if I ever want another one, I'll just go buy one from Lynn. So, I do, I do wish I would have done one that I could see the sewing on the outside. Because that is my prize at the end, is seeing that I sewed each of those signatures. And now, you don't know that I did. The thing I do like about it is, when you're working in the pages, they lay down flat with the sewed-in method. So I thought that was really cool. Anyway. Here's the fruits of that labor. Ah. Uh, how many signatures did I end up doing? I don't know. Eight, nine. Nine signatures it looks like. Nine signatures of two. I just love using, this was fun, using the uh, phone book. Hmm, I don't have a, this is a double, triple pocket, and I don't have any, I need to go through and put some tags in here. I didn't fill my pockets up. What do we got here? This can turn into a pocket. Isn't she pretty? I found this old, old sketchbook of how to sketch. I used a lot of the pictures out of it. Painty paper with ruffle. This is that roofing paper that my husband bought me a long time ago, and I'm still using it. Precious moments. I just like that each page had material on it. That was really neat. I love seeing the material down there, all raggedy and adorable. This was uh, Citrusolve. I thought she was a beautiful woman, so I just Citrusolved over a stencil on her to just remove some of it. A 
little flip up here for notes. Part of my old day planner. Got a little pocket at the bottom. I should sew that end up. the end. So that's what I did. That's what I've been up to. And thank you for joining me. Um, oh, I also followed Janet Nash yesterday at on her, or Monday, and she was doing cute little frames on her live. So I did two little frames. I have not, I have not got the backs onto mine yet. And she made them open so that you could slide a picture down in them. I made them very thin. She did two layers of cardboard. I'm just doing one because I'm going to glue mine in an art journal. And I didn't want it too thick. So, those were really fun. I don't know if you can see my sparkly glue. So, those were fun. Making little cardboard journals. Okay, um, Christina or Christina Shack is the inventor of Final Friday, Final Friday, Flip Through Friday. So she just says do hashtag Flip Through Friday and you can see what everybody else is doing on Friday. And I know mine is on Wednesday, but I'll forget by Friday or something else will be going on. So um, thanks for joining me and I'll be back in a little bit with a uh, Pinterest play video. Bye-bye from Birdie.